Hello and welcome back to Boring Dad Gaming, where today we're going to be playing some more Rogue Trader. These guys are still struggling to get in and out of this doorway, but that's fine. Um, we have picked up a new party member. We have Jay here, who is a bit of a gunslinger, which I'll be quite looking forward to play with that, actually, see how it works. Let's have a quick look at the map. That's stuff I just dropped. Notes and stuff. Um, so we could maybe go up here. Let's see. Yes, we do kind of want to get down into that area. It's a question of how we do it. I tread a path unexplored. I don't actually know. Um, what does this area join up to? Oh, maybe, the, maybe there's an elevator that goes down there, I think. Let's do that. Does this work? No? Embrace true power. Right. Maybe you do it from below? Yeah, okay. Maybe we get into that below area another way, and we can kind of travel back up to here. That'll be my guess. That kind of makes sense. So we've done the warehouse, we've done the dark hideout and the cultist den. The Martyr's Endurance is the bar, I think. So I think we might be done here. Uh, we want to go back to... I forget exactly. The, the, the priest guy who gave us the mission to uh, wipe out the cultists? Is that what? I think he was around the Liege's residence, wasn't he? Okay, so, uh, oh, this is actually in his residence, isn't it? And I didn't want to come here. I wanted to be on the, uh, the outside. All right, let's go find that guy, Hieronymus. I forget his, I forget his rank. Something Hieronymus. Powers unseen uncover my path. It's all the way around here, wasn't he? I th oh yeah, here he is. The Emperor protects! Uh, your request has been fulfilled. The cultist den in the Shadow Quarters is being cleared out. A grim smile brightens his features and he makes the sign of the Aquila. I hope that their suffering was commensurate with their deeds. Uh, good, we got some rep with them. That's good. Uh, have a look at what? status we're at now so I want to get to level 2 I want this sanctified staff I think is the one I want maybe it's not I can't remember which staff I wanted yeah okay um, to look at our things that we're doing Uh, what do we need to do with this? I think that's just done, isn't it? Let's not show completed quests. Okay, so we need to go back to the ship and have a meeting with people. Okay. Uh, so this is just exploring planets. We've done four of ten. Uh, okay, we need to go to a different planet for that one. Watch, watch, enter on the ship. Again. Okay, that's all. That all involves going back to our ship. Ship. So if we kept collecting that sword, we could have become a champion of chaos. <laughs> okay. Well, we've given it to uh, the other dude now, haven't we? I 
Okay, so that means going back to the ship. Uh, there was another cache, wasn't there? Unless it's down as rumours. Ah, this is probably it. Serves as the Chapel of St. Drusus. There may be an ancient cache. So is that this? Or is it the other one? Ah, uh, it's not that then, is it? It's, um... I think it's next to the, the palace. Will bow. Not that. Is it, is it the one that's over here? Intriguing. Oh, it does say goods, doesn't it? I don't think it said that before. You're on the right path, Seeker. Remember the place. Small key, large windows. Okay, so let's look in the thing again. The hint mentions a small key and large windows. That sounds like part of... Footfalls Void Dock Alpha Row. Good. Okay, let's do that then. So we'll go back to the dock. We need to speak to the refuge, the Navica refugees anyway. Uh, there. I guess here's where we want to go. So, let's go to the dock. Embrace it's been a while since I was here. It's like I kind of remember what we're doing. Might be marked on the map. That's the Opticon. I think there's a lot of loot, like leaflets and stuff. So I won't look at all those. Large... The small key, large window. There's probably one of these. There was there was one that didn't have anything in it, wasn't there? That's our ship. Oh. I tread a path unexplored. Oh, let's have a look here anyway. Large window. It's not really a window, is it? It's Goods. Here we go. The answer is close, Seeker. Remember the word realizing. Remember the place, a tunnel in the shadow of a bridge. A bridge in the shadow of a great statue. Okay, so I imagine that's back in the shadow quarter, yeah? Note, this part of the shadow quarters is currently under quarantine due to a possible outbreak of disease. Apologies for the dog if I haven't um, edited, remember to edit that part out. <laughs> he explodes into action behind me. Uh, I think somebody walked past the front door, judging by where he's currently barking. Ah, the joys of having a little Dachshund. Um, yeah, so I th it sounds like we can't currently get there, so I might leave that until a future visit. I'm sure we're going to be back here, but probably quite... <gasps> Heinrichs has returned. So if we get... Okay, so let's think about this. If we do get Heinrichs back... And I would like him back, I think. Who is he going to replace? So we haven't tried Jay yet. I liked him in the party. But, uh, let's see. Keep, keep. Obviously I keep. Me. Pascal I really like. Argenta is good. But of the ones there, maybe the most disposable. But she's our demolitions guy. Jay's the new one. We haven't even had a chance to use her yet. So I'm tempted to keep her. But this guy I quite liked. A familiar figure turns to you, Heinrichs von Kallox, interrogator of the Order Xenos. Bows his head respectfully. Lord Captain. Oh, honored interrogator, what a surprise. Did you, perchance, leave something in your cabin? Not at all, First Officer Wasserian. I am not in the habit of leaving a trail, but I thank you for your concern. Greetings, interrogator. To what do I owe the pleasure of this latest visit? 
only to our mutual duty to humanity. It is that duty that demands that I disturb your peace once more. I was able to contact my mentor and report the tragic events that transpired on Rykad Minoris. I also received some information from my agents regarding the movements and actions of enemies of humanity, including the Xenos, that we're assuming were involved in the theft of the Star. According to their findings, the threat now hangs over other worlds, this time yours, Lord Captain. Heinrichs clears his throat and begins in a pointedly official tone. By the order of Lord Inquisitor Xavier Calcazar, whose duty is to stand sentinel over the Coronas Expanse, the rogue trader of House von Valencius is to take on board the agent of the Most Holy Inquisition and provide escort and support in deeds great and small that serve to safeguard the territories of the Imperium against its enemies. This decree is effective immediately upon the announcement and remains in effect until decided otherwise by His Excellency Calcazar. What exactly caused this need to rejoin my crew? The cause is the activity of humanity's enemies, including the cult of the Final Dawn. In my absence, the situation in the Cronus Expanse has changed. I have received an exhaustive report from my agents. This heresy has taken root in the region where the Von Valancius worlds lie. You probably already know about the fate of the industrial world of Kiava Gamma. If not, then I will share what details I know, but not here. Better to talk on board where we will not be overheard. I, rogue trader Dahlia von Borinicus von Valancius, welcome the agent of the Golden Throne aboard my ship and take on the responsibility of assisting him in the fight against the evil that threatens humanity. Heinrichs gives a reserved nod, an answer befitting a righteous servant of the Emperor. If duty has brought you aboard the rogue trader's ship once more, then such is the Emperor's will. Welcome back, interrogator. Thank you, sister. It is an honor to be traveling with one of the blessed Adepta Sororitas. The, the Inquisition. Dahlia von Borinicus, you never mentioned you socialized with such uh, distinguished servants of the Emperor. I bet it takes someone truly remarkable to warrant such eminent and close attention. Jay lets out a laugh. Heinrichs glances at her and tilts his head slightly. Mistress Heydari, ever since my first visit to Footfall, I've been hearing about your colleagues and personal talents, but I'm afraid your full name escapes me. Would you kindly refresh my memory? Laughter gets stuck in Jay's throat. She pales slightly, but still forces an apologetic smile. I don't mind, Shireen. Let my full name remain naught but a stray sound to you. Plain and uninteresting. Master von Kallox. Cassie's voice is brimming with genuine joy, which she immediately hides behind a facade of highborn primness. Since you are with us once more, I do hope you'll find time to finish our conversation about the literary works of Cronhalla the Blessed. I will make every effort, Lady Ocelia. I must also deliver this to you. Heinrichs pulls out a sealed letter. The Lord Inquisitor specified that the contents of this envelope are for your eyes only. I would ask that you to read it as soon as you have the time. That is everything for the time being. Are you headed to the ship, or do you still have business on footfall? Whatever the case, I can either wait for you on board or accompany you as part of your retinue. Uh, yeah, Tell you what. Let's take him so we can level him up, because he's probably got a couple of levels to, to add. In fact, I can see that he does. And we'll uh, next time we make Planetfall, we'll just add everyone back in that we want. So, uh, 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 I'm going to leave Argenta for now, just to add Heinrichs in. So we can level him. There we go. What is it, Rogue Trader? So, he is, uh, he's also an Arch Militant. Which is what our gender is. So ability, I quite like the devastating attack. I think that works well. Reckless rush immediately gains three plus his agility bonus, so that'd be seven movement points. And if he has stacks of us to do, those stacks are double to the end of the turn. Okay, interesting. I mean, movement's always good. Wildfire. His next attack will cost zero AP, will not count towards the attack limit, and will grant a stack of versatility, even if the attack type is the last one. The cost of this ability is reduced by minus one for every four stacks of versatility. Okay, I mean, it does cost three AP, so it kind of... Yeah, you'll want to be doing this not on the first go, by the sound of it. But if you have 12 stacks of versatility, so I guess in longer fights... Yeah, so I'm not sure about that. 
Yeah. Confident approach. Kick. Yeah, stuff like that. I mean, I might take the devastating attack again. It's just, it's just, it's just a good one. It just adds, it just adds something to his next attack for the cost of one AP. So I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I'll probably pause it here while I, I check out these. And it might well be that I take this on Argenta as well, but I'm, this versatility is something that sort of fuels this arch militant archetype. So I'm going to add this so he starts every combat with a couple of stacks of that. So I think that's good. It's not immediately amazing, but I think as we go, it will help fuel a lot of other stuff. Uh, let's have a little look at his inventory. So someone mentioned about using this force sword. I guess it's for this, but it deals psychic force. I wish you kind of said what this did. Think about using it on my character. So what am I using in melee at the moment? I've got this elite chain sword. I mean, I might give I might give him this chain axe, and just keep this in my inventory now, like because we might not take him out again on missions. Um, like I might unequip his grenades as well, and make sure that just Pascal's always got grenades he can use. I don't think any of those are amazing, so we'll leave those with him for now. Um, and I'll think about—I'll have a think about this because I, I mean, I might try it because I'm doing a lot more damage with that one. My psi rate is doing an extra one damage at the moment, but as we level up the psi, that'll obviously do more. I, I'm one because someone said something about it attacking using your willpower modifier or something, which is quite high on Dahlia. I'm wondering if that's the psychic force attack. It's just it doesn't really well let's equip it and maybe in the description down here uh, my aspirations will it say more humanity. special attack that counts as a major psychic power so that probably add a lot on the, the bar but it deals an additional two times psi rating which is one plus willpower bonus so uh, two plus seven so an extra nut oh extra nine damage but may trigger psychic phenomena and perils of the warp okay it is it is two ap that but yeah that could it's, it's an interesting one it's an interesting one i think say that i was going to continue using that who would i give the elite chainsword to maybe yeah i mean we'll, we'll give it to we'll give it to abelard Looking forward to using that. That is, I mean, being able to use these like Aldarian exotic weapons and stuff, I think will be good because they apparently they're some of the most powerful weapons in the game. And she's currently the only one who, in our merry little band who's able to use them. Okay, good. All right. Um, where are these refugees I was going to speak to? I told them to wait in the docking bay. Also, I want to check out where I saw the the staff. Although I can do that from the ship as well. In fairness. Talk to this guy as he's here, though. Okay, so yeah, I don't think it's on. It's not on his. It's not in his little store, is it? Surgeon's manual, bonus to Medicaid. Mm. Leave that for now. This whenever the wearer hits a shot, an enemy with dead eye shot, it reduces the enemy's. 
Dead eye shot. Don't often use that. I mean, as someone pointed out, though, in the comments, just take everything that you qualify for, even if you don't see an immediate use for it, because, you know, why not? So let's just take... It doesn't actually cost us, you know, quote, money um, to do so. I mean, it's, it'll sit in our inventory, obviously, but, uh, yeah, let's go with that for now. I might drop these clues that I've already found the caches for. Oh, maybe I can't, because it's, I don't know, maybe it's a quest critical item. Well, I didn't see... Oh, here they are. Here they are. Oh, maybe they're not. Yeah, okay, well, maybe they're, maybe they're on our ship, or maybe they just vanished from the story when I sort of said they could take uh, cover there. Lord Captain, the inspection of the ship's systems is complete. The tech priests are reporting the machine spirits are calm and satisfied. Everything is ready for onward travel, except there is an issue you must be made aware of. Cassia makes a quick nervous gesture, adjusting the adornment over her third eye. I've been studying the records left by the vessel's previous navigator. I, I wanted to double check the route to Dargonis and discovered that... It does not match the one recorded in the Atlas. It is more than a minor warp fluctuation. The route has been wiped out. It can no longer be used for travelling. To make matters worse, I started checking the paths from the Atlas, one after the other, and saw the same thing everywhere. The warp is roiling with an ominous storm, bursting with vivid and screaming colours. It will not hinder our movement, but all previous knowledge is now utterly useless. Argenta angrily chops the air with the side of her palm. Warp storms are our enemies, just like heretics and demons. It is a shame they can't be dispersed with a flamer or a bolter. Now we can be certain that the problems with astropathic communication in the Corona's Expanse are no coincidence. There is a warp disturbance in your way, Captain. It is swallowing messages and disrupting familiar routes. This means you need to locate the key worlds of the Von Valancius Protectorate as soon as possible. I am talking about Janus, Dargonus and Chiava Gamma. Charting new routes so they can be reached and restoring control will be the necessary next step. Uh, well, let tell me about Janus. The surface of Janus was altered extensively so the planet could be designated an agri-world. It is a powerful food base, capable of supplying the burgeoning protectorate and exporting provisions to the outer worlds at the same time. Janus owes much of its prosperity to the Governor House of Viat. Under its leadership, the world has grown ever more prosperous year after year, securing shipments and taxes while keeping the workforce tightly controlled. Hmm. What about Kiava Gamma? Industrial world Kiava Gamma is being managed by the Governor House of Gaprak and supplies your protectorate with rare mineral resources. Additionally, the planet features an Adeptus Mechanicus manufactorum that processes minerals and prepares them for shipment. I testify that Kiava Gamma is a world marked by the Omnisire's patronage. By his grace, the manufactorums of the colony are inhabited by committed and industrious machine spirits. Heinrich coughs quietly. Mistress Tolliman neglected to mention that the Kiavacanum Manufactorum also supplies heavy machinery, from forage harvesters to vessel systems and components. Abelard turns his hide eyes on Heinrichs. You display a commendable knowledge of our world's manufacturing capability, Von Kalox. Pleased to be of service. What do you know about Dargonus? Dargonus is the heart and soul of your protectorate. It is where the main administrative resources and storage facilities are, and so is the Von Valancius Palace. If you would like to know, this is where you will publicly accept the title of Rogue Trader. Dargonis is a major administrative hub that runs the cargo fleet and keeps track of your finances. Avalard, what's your opinion? Which world should we deal with first? Avalard strokes his beard for a few seconds before giving a hesitant reply. Uh, rediscovering the Agri-World will supply your protectorate with something none of your servants can do without. Uh, sustenance. The importance of basic supply should not be underestimated. Uh, just look at footfall in its current pitiful state. On the other hand, I am concerned by the rumours concerning Kiava Gamma. There have been no problems on Janus for many years, but something is very wrong with the industrial world right now. Delay may cost us the entire planet. And I trust I do not have to explain the capital world. Losing it would make us the laughing, st laughing stock of the other dynasties. 
Besides, the loss of chronicles and ledgers would spell a bureaucratic catastrophe. So all three systems are equally vital to the Protectorate. It falls to you to decide which should be brought into the fold before the rest, Lord Captain. Uh, what would the consequences of losing contact with these worlds be? A world deprived of connection to its neighboring systems and the Cronus Expanse's infrastructure can only rely on itself, and their capabilities are often limited. For example, Janus does not have a fleet of its own. Pirates, cultists, heretics, Xenos, anyone could prey on the helpless planet. The loss of communication is a threat to your position. A rogue trader with no protectorate to back them is one that grows weaker by the day. Yes, well, the Vox Master is entirely correct. You are rogue trader Dahlia von Berenicus von Valencius, the successor to three of Theodora von Valencius, one of the most influential women this side of the moor. But you also knew to the business of governing. Many will doubt your competence and try to carve up your protectorate so they can snatch a piece for themselves. It is important to show your potential allies and foes that you are in control of the situation, which is why the sooner we reclaim these lost worlds, the better. Very well, our course is clear. Do my officers have any other issues that require immediate attention? That is all, Lord Captain. The vessel and the crew await your instructions and are now ready to depart footfall immediately, should you so desire. Well, we know from our journal that we have some stuff to do on the bridge at the moment. Um, one of which was to talk to the High Fact Totem, wherever he is. I thought he was here. He might just be out of my vision. Oh, he is. Okay, good. Uh, and we can also do our trading via him. The High Fact Totem Janus Danrock greets you with a cool smile and the merest hint of a bow. Um, Pleasure to see you, Lord Captain. How may I be of assistance? Uh, Vigdis informed me about a problem with the servitors. What happened? Oh, well, you see, your ladyship, the ship's servitors have been malfunctioning of late. They violate protocols, interrupt their tasks, observe crew members for long periods of time, and move erratically with no meaning or purpose. Janus Danrock nervously pulls on his luxurious frock coat as if it were uncomfortably tight. Had it been a rogue technical fault, I would have decided the fate of these servitors myself, but I deemed it necessary to notify you. I do not wish to hide such irregularities from the Lord Captain. If you wish to observe the servitors' unusual behaviour before you decide their fate, this can be arranged. The majority of the defective units have been delivered to one of the storage compartments pending your decision. Pascal Hanuman expressed the desire to be present during the inspection should it be carried out. I suppose the expertise of the deemed esteemed Majos may come in handy. Uh, I wish to take a look before deciding their fate. As you wish, your ladyship. Would you like the Prime Engine Seer Prime to accompany you? Yes, Pascal can come with me. As your ladyship com commands. Oh, okay. When her ladyship arrived at the scene, she found the servitors in the same position that they assumed after they'd been corralled into the bay, all standing in a long spiralling line and facing the centre of their strange formation. The moment her ladyship crossed the threshold of the bay gate, their bodies jerked into motion, all as one as if obeying a command. The servitors turned to face the Lord Captain. The Technomats, tasked with overseeing the defective units, even reached for their weapons. But then the servitors went just as still as went still just as abruptly, staring at her ladyship with vacant eyes. All present held their breath, disturbed by this sight. We waited for the Lord Captain to speak. Her ladyship, Dahlia von Berenicus von Valencius. Uh, gestured for the service, uh, ge gesture for the engine seer prime to study the servitors. The engine seer prime slowly waded into the motionless ranks of the servitors, peering into their faces and checking the readings. There was no haste in Pascal's actions. With mesmerizing diligence, he inspected every single unit in his path, and binary prayers were his companions in this investigation. The examination confirmed the technomat's initial hypothesis. The servitors' souls, or rather the souls of the people they once were, had awakened. Not yet fully conscious of their past and present, these half-machines could nonetheless feel primitive emotions and sensations such as fear and pain. This undesirable consequence of shoddily performing, performed lobotomy is most rarely observed, and yet for some unknown reason it had occurred in every single one of the servitors gathered in the bay. I'm going to take several steps forward. 
Immediately, the servitors, each and every one of them, stepped towards the Lord Captain in perfect unison. They mimicked her movements with frightening precision. The rogue trader halted in place and, after a moment's thought, waved her hand, and the servitors, just as synchronously, repeated the gesture as well. When the Lord Captain turned quizzically to the Technomat, so did the servitors, as if mocking her. Whatever the Lord Captain did, be it an incline of the head, a wave of the hand, or a step to the side, the defective units repeated it without a moment's delay or hesitation, like grotesque marionettes controlled by an unseen puppeteer. We observed this mime unfold in distressed bafflement for nearly a minute until the servitors finally came to a stop. Not sensing any threat from them, the rogue captain, sorry, the rogue trader approached with confidence. The Lord Captain examined the servitors. As High Factotum, I'm not going to do his voice for all this text. It was I who had prompted that entire inspection, and thus it was my duty to allow the Lord Cap to follow the Lord Captain. As we stepped closer, we noticed a fascinating irregularity. The servitor's pupils, normally still, were shaking wildly. Their bulging veins were pulsating under their copper collars inscribed with their past offences. It was as if those mindless half-machines were locked in a perpetual state of extreme tension. A visibly shaken technomat behind us proposed that the human souls had awakened within the servitor's bodies after a long slumber deep within their lobotomized brains. Formerly bereft of intelligence, they had attained awareness, feeling, and understanding. After a pause, the Technomat added that the servitors used to function properly and that no one had been able to explain the change in their behaviour. A gay, still trained on the motionless but animate half-machines and half-people, the Lord Captain stepped away. Uh, don't really want to, want to be disassembled, not if they're self-aware. What, what do the Technomats say? The Technomat's long-winded and detailed report could have been summarized in a single key point. Despite the servitor's abnormal behavior, they were still quite capable of carrying out tasks, and therefore the circumstances did not call for their termination. Okay. Uh, let's announce our decision. Her ladyship looked at me with unwavering resolve, and it was that confidence that wrenched me out of the nightmarish stupor that had me tensely observing the scene unfolding before me. I guess Iconoclast, which is kind of the path I want to do to dispose of them so that their human souls may be released from torment. Okay. So these servitors, it seems like they're criminals. As I said, I'm not wholly or even marginally uh, knowledgeable about the, the Warhammer 40k lore. So this is, for anyone who is, this is probably, you know, explaining very basic, basic uh, uh, things. But... Um, yeah, it does seem like they're, they're criminals who are paying for their crimes by, after death, having their bodies uh, used as servants, basically, like cyborg servants. Um, but let's dispose of them so that the human souls, they, they've done enough, basically, and if they've gained awareness, they should be set free. The Lord Captain's command was executed post-haste. All defective units were incinerated in the furnaces and their remains were expelled into the void. The crew was provided with replacement servitors and soon forgot all about the destroyed unit's peculiarities. Yet this incident haunts my memories to this day. With the fate of the defective servitors decided, nothing could now distract the Lord Captain from her mission. Interesting. I mean, I, mean, I guess con versus continuing in servitude, just being sort of set set free in that way was probably a you know nice thing to do. Uh, have you ever heard the name Fiery Reckoning? From what I can tell, it is a void ship of some sort. Janris thinks for a moment, pursing his lips in concentration. Oh, I'm afraid it is not immediately familiar to me, your ladyship. Please allow me a moment. He starts rapidly tapping on the screen of his data slate. Hmm, yes. I say, House von Valancius did indeed sign a contract with the owners of a vessel with the designation Fiery Reckoning. Hm. There are transactions, records of the ship picking up cargo from Kiava Gamma. Oh, well, this is odd. The data log ends there. Apparently the ship had some interactions with one of your workshops in your industrial world. I beg your pardon, your ladyship, but that is the extent of the assistance I can provide you in regard to this particular matter.
Yes, this one. I would like to replace the painting of Theodora in my chambers. Hang my portrait instead. It will be done, your ladyship. Uh, I don't want to retrain. Uh, but let's do some trading. So, I haven't met the Imperial Navy people yet. But everyone else I have. Um, let's look at Vladame. Has he got the staff I want? It might be this telepath staff? No. Uh, ooh. Um, well, I mean, I guess I'll take the med kit, the plasma grenades, and furore. I don't even know what that does yet. Well, I'm sure we will look into it a bit. Um, oh, what's that? Okay, we're way off that profit factor. What does he like? He likes these things. I mean... Okay, let's come out of there. That Rizza. Is it this one? Staff of... It's got to be this one, isn't it? The Staff of Endless Flame. So we want to go to level 7 with them. Which I think is quite a ways off. Serrated Greatsword. I think that's worth getting. I don't know if any of us are using a greatsword yet, but still. 10% parry reduction and 5% armor penetration for melee attacks. Well, that's pretty good. And a med kit. Sure, we'll take all that. Um, so, yeah, so we'll take all this. The Enforcer Helmet. Taunting Scream. Mm, I don't have that skill. Yeah, we've got his stuff. So, with Rizza, let's see if we can raise our rep anymore. Uh, well. All of this stuff, I suppose. Getting up there. We need to go a lot further. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I can send that to cargo. Some of these things I just haven't really known who to give them to. Um, all right, fine. So, is anyone using the great sword? I know. Where's Pascal? Where are my guys? Where are my guys and girls? Well, that's one hand now. And Pascal's got this Thunder Hammer, so compare, comparing the two. More damage, way less armor penetration. So I keep I think we keep the I think we keep the the thing on him for now. Uh, I guess Avalard could go two handed again. It depends on Where is Avalard? There he is. So he's using this elite chainsaw now, which is pretty good. There's less armor pen. He has got this combat shotgun. I guess the thinking here could be, what was this? With Abelard is uh, he's always going to be a melee character, so I might I might give him the choice between like you know these and then the big melee hit and then the combat shotgun. I might give to Cassia instead. She's not really a sniper, but you know potentially could use that maybe. Give it to Heinrichs. Should I use it instead of my staff? Do 
does give me the willpower. Don't know. Just don't know. <laughs> Let's try it. Maybe. Until I mean I'm a ways off getting that firestorm staff, but let's try this out. Okay, so I wanted to speak to our Genta as well. Wherever she is. Uh, she's at the far end. Past Vigdis, actually, which is... Back this way, isn't it? She's probably, like, here or here. She's here. That's Ravel. Rogue traitor. Sister... Sister Argenta looks tired. There are dark circles under her eyes. Her hair is somewhat disheveled and she moves like she's a little on edge. You have a personal request? I indeed have a request, Rogue Trader. Oh, okay. She's not voicing this then. The accursed servants of Chaos who assaulted the ship took the lives of your loyal crew members. And they orphaned many children, including the progeny of the brave officers who defended their posts until the bitter end. I don't know what customary practices there are for cases like this in the Von Valencia's territory, but in the world I'm familiar with, the children of such brave souls could expect to receive some special consideration. Perhaps the rogue trader could meet with the orphans? I will meet with them. No formalities needed. These are the children of people who gave their lives for the Von Valencia's dynasty. My consideration is the least they deserve. I will pass on your instructions. Thank you for taking my request to heart. Alright, let's go. The motley group of adolescents do not take their eyes off you, gazing at you as if you were a creature straight from a fairy tale. Our indefatigable sister has been keeping an eye on these pups. Abelard glances at the gathered children. It is hardly the Scola Progenium in here, but we have provided the orphans of our ship with adequate care and instruction. Argenta is standing to the side of the group. At your approach, she perks up and announces, her voice ringing. Brave ones, the master of this ship has appeared before you, the one who guides it through the darkness of the universe by the Emperor's will. Greet your Lord Captain, the rogue trader of House von Valancius. Smile at the group. Your Lord Captain greets you, brave ones. The teenagers keep staring at you. The girl who has remained close to Argenta smiles uncertainly. A skinny, pale lad tries to throw his shoulders back and stand at attention like a soldier. Only a few teenagers at the far end of the row seem sullen and not particularly impressed. One of the scowling visitors was th with a thin scar across his face tosses it th his head back and says bitterly, So what? Why should we care? Our friends and parents died in their dozens for you, noble lot, and you just... Give us speeches. Argenta quickly turns to the boy. A flurry of emotions flashes in her dark eyes like she wants both to calm him and scold him for his impudence. <laughs> Punish the troublemaker. Address the group. If you have things to say, say them without fear. I will listen. The boy smiles grimly. It doesn't matter what we say, it won't bring our parents back, and it won't change our fates neither. We'll keep slaving away on this ship until we drop and die like our folks, or worse. Okay, there's lots of stuff here. Okay, we'll do the first one. I understand your grief and dismay. Your parents died. It's not an easy thing to go through. But they gave their lives for the truth, for the good of the whole ship, for the Imperium. Do not speak of their honourable fate with anger and disdain. You heard the rogue trader. Her words carry the wisdom of the Imperium. It's hard to say whether or not your words have left an impression on the boy, but he nods slowly. Then he catches himself and gives you an awkward bow. Abelard gives a sign and servants immediately emerge carrying packaged treats with Von Valancius emblazoned on the wrappers. It appears that the Seneschal came prepared for any contingency.
flinging it into their faces. Argenta rubs her temples pensively. She smiles and offers a few more words of encouragement and then leaves the bay. Okay, well that went reasonably well I think, but she wants to talk to us about other stuff, so let's go back. Right, so the first one. I'm waiting for you to tell me about your past and to explain the strange words of that cultist on Footfall. Yes, I'm ready. I would ask only one thing of you, rogue trader. If I may, I would like to see the chamber of the sacred warrant and kneel before the relic touched by the Emperor himself. A difficult conversation lies ahead of us, and I wish to pray by the relic before I lay my soul bare. Of course, let's go there right away. Argenta drops to her knees, her hands making the sign of the Aquila. Her eyes are locked on the sweeping signature on the warrant, a seemingly mundane thing, merely a flourish on a piece of paper, unless one knows whose hand left that mark and whose blood is on that paper. If thou seest a flaw in me, smite me. If thou knowest a fall of mine, burn me with flames of fury and righteousness. But if thou seest a light in me, grace me. If thou hearest this plea of mine, bless me with wrath of fury and of righteousness. Argenta's voice is sonorous, as if made for singing hymns and prayers, but right now she cannot seem to catch her breath. So overwhelmed with emotion is she. For I breathe by the will of thine, for I live by the law of thine. I carry thy word, O Emperor. I bring solace to servants of thine, and ruin to foes of thine, a fate of terror and righteousness. Upon finishing, she closes her eyes and remains silent for a long time with her head raised high. Slowly, like the first licks of flame in a campfire, a smile blossoms on her lips. When Argenta finally opens her eyes, they are alight with uncanny resolution. Rogue trader, we need to talk, or rather, I need to tell you something, the truth. The truth about how I ended up on Theodora von Valancius' ship, and about the cultists we encountered on Footfall. I'm listening. Please understand, I couldn't trust you before. I'll tell you my story and you'll see why. Argenta pauses. I'll start at the beginning. It's easier to piece everything together that way. Upon arriving the Expanse and on Footfall, I found no purpose here, only torment. I wasn't needed. The reliquary I had been assigned to safeguard was already well protected by Reverend Hieronymus's mission. And no one was even trying to defile it. For all its lawlessness, Footfall respects the worship of the Emperor. That was when Lady Theodora, head of your dynasty, appeared. She became an agent of divine will, in a way. Argenta falters, searching for the words. It was from her that I learned about a planet recently discovered by her scouts, Salus Prime. For a rogue trader, the planet was of little interest, a feral world away from convenient warp routes. But for me, for me, learning about its existence was a revelation. Please continue. The description of Salus Prime was familiar to me. It seemed very similar to a world from an ancient legend, the legend of Saint Argenta and her ship. Her voice grows reverent. Argenta, the living saint. She is my patroness. The Order named me after her. She died millennia ago when heretics caused her ship to fall from the skies. But even those blasphemers could not touch Argenta's ashes or her holy relic, the One Star. For the fallen ship, which now served as the resting place for the saint's remains, would only allow the truly righteous to enter. All others would meet their death. Imagine what I felt when this flash of insight came upon me. The world where St. Argenta's ship fell was merely a vague legend. No one knew its actual whereabouts. And suddenly I, named myself to after the saint, came across this information. I realized at that moment it, that it was a potent, sorry, that it was a portent that I must journey to the planet and find the ship. And so I asked Reverend Hieronymus to let me go for a time on a personal pilgrimage. I boarded Theodora's ship and demanded passage to the newly discovered planet, Salus Prime. You imagine, what is the One Star? Apologies, I got so carried away I forgot to explain. 
The one star is the relic kept by Saint Argenta. I belong to the order Protana Pronatus, and we attach particular significance to holy relics. The one star is one of the lost relics of the past, so mysterious that no one even knows what it is exactly. Argenta's hagiography at times calls it a banner, or a set of armour, or a blessed chain sword. One thing is certain, it was a beacon of righteousness and it was lost with Argenta's death. Uh, what happened next? Defeat, Argenta says bitterly. The ship's augers failed to detect anything of note during orbital scanning. I was expecting this, though. According to the legend, the ship can conceal itself from the naked eye, and only a pilgrim guided by a pure heart can find it. What I didn't expect was an ambush waiting for us on the planet. I landed there with a small unit provided by Theodora. I knew Saint Argenta's hagiography by heart. I knew all, I knew all the legends about her. I followed their obscure clues, the descriptions of mountains and rivers from millennia-old tales, and I was certain that I had found a way to the ship. And that's when we were attacked. The words we heard in the heretic shrine on footfall. Something about ways, doors, pleas addressed to some lord, the edge of daybreak. Argenta is shaking with disgust. They were the same words as those spoken by the cultists who attacked us on Salus Prime. My whole unit perished. All those honest, brave people I had led to search for the relic. It was only a miracle that I didn't perish along with them. I didn't connect these events at first. The cultists on Footfall, the cultists on Salus Prime, the cultists attacking the ship and Conrad's betrayal. What if, all, what if these are all links in the same chain? What if they've long since infiltrated the ranks of the Von Valancius servants? What if I... I led those heretics to the sacred planet with my search? No need to blame yourself. If the heretics really had wormed their way into the Van Valancius ranks by then, they would have found the planet even without you going there. I doubt it. No one except me was particularly interested in the planet. Conrad, on the other hand, he sympathised with me when I first came aboard. He helped me arrange an audience with Theodora and supported me in my effort to visit the planet. I never told him plainly why I wanted to go there, but I imagine that vulture must have figured out that it was something important, something related to the holy faith of the Imperium. And what could delight a heretic more than defiling a relic? So how did you manage to escape? Theodora's people received the distress call, came to my rescue and brought me aboard the ship. I barely remember what happened. When they arrived, I was already severely wounded, fighting back with whatever remained, remained of my strength. I think I shouted that we had to go after them, but they didn't listen. They took me to the shuttle and pulled out. After that, it's all blackness. When I came to, we were already in the middle of a warp jump. Theodora had urgent matters to take care of, and she decided that she could clear out the planet at a later time. And that's why you didn't trust me before, correct? Yes, rogue trader. Argenta looks you in the eye. I saw with my own eyes how a member of your family showed his true colours as a servant of the archenemy. I had already suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of cultists and was afraid of another betrayal. I couldn't be forthright with you, and so I studied you, looking for seeds of corruption or the light of righteousness. And what did you find? A woman who stood shoulder to shoulder with me and helped eradicate the cultists on footfall. Argenta smiles as if reminiscing about a pleasant evening spent in the company of friends, rather than a bloody battle. Although my opinion of you started to change even before then, back when you agreed to talk to the orphans at my request. A leader who's willing to honour those who laid down their lives for them and take care of their children is a leader who inspires trust, and the way you acted in that moment. Do you remember? There was a young man whose grief and confusion had driven him to insolence. You didn't turn a blind eye to his misdeed, but you chose the right words to show him the path to redemption. It was harsh, but necessary. Like the Emperor's truth. Like bitter medicine that helps the sick. I learned much about you in that moment, Rogue Trader, and I want to believe that I wasn't mistaken in my, mu in my judgement. So, just to clarify, you were wounded, so you never found, found St. Argenta's ship, is that right? Yes. I rushed to Theodora the moment I could walk again, and I insisted on going back to Salus Prime to defend the relic from the heretics. But I was told that the warp had destroyed the old route to the planet, and that plotting a new one would take a great deal of time and effort, as if there was anything more important than protecting the faith and hunting down servants of the archenemy. In any event, the route was lost, and all knowledge of it died in the attack on the ship along with the old navigator. But now we have a new lead, the data that we collected in the cultish shrine on Footfall. I don't care what that reprobates we executed said. There must be a way to track them down. Tell me, Rogue Trader, will you help me in this undertaking? Will you help me find this great relic, 
and return it to the people of the Imperium. If it's important to you, I will help. Argenta walks up and places her hand on your shoulder. So be it, rogue trader. As I stand here before the warrant, the embodiment of the Emperor's will marked by his own hand, I vow that I will not relent until the holy relic has been returned and the heretics punished. And may the light be with us, both, on this path. All right. Oh. Okay, so let's have a quick look at our journal then. Because uh, there's a few other things we need to do here. Uh, okay, let's go there. Fine. That's the main stuff. Yes, need to talk to Jay. Talk to Heinrichs. And Pascal. Okay. So where are these guys? Uh, well, they're close together. And Heinrichs is right by the nav map. Okay. Here we go. It's right here. Heinrichs looks at you intently. His head tilted. Uh, I want the Inquisition to take care of a deer and rid me of it. That is tempting. That is tempting. Um, but you want to discuss the nature of your mission? Yes, but not here. I wouldn't want our conversation to be gossip fodder on the bridge and in the officer's mess. Oh, another loading screen. Oh, only a quick one. Heinrichs nods slightly. Thank you for finding an opportunity to talk. I trust now would be a good time to explain the reason for my return aboard your ship. I welcome the chance to assist the Inquisition in its inquiries, Von Kallax. Lord Captain, your enthusiasm is commendable. The interrogator smiles, but his eyes remain cold. To business, then. The cult of the final dawn, the madmen preach their heretical doctrine along, among the denizens of the Cronus Expanse and instigate crimes against the throne and humanity. One such crime took place in your protectorate. The Lord Inquisitor considered it necessary to have one of his acolytes accompany the rogue trader on the voyage into the corrupted region. I also need to meet with one of my observers on the capital world of your domain. Uh, why would Ordo Xenos agents investigate a chaos cult? You are well, well versed in how the Inquisition is organized, Dahlia von Brunicus. Yes, initially our arrival in the Cronus Expanse was dictated by the need to fight Xenos. But there is more. The cult is tangentially related to my main specialization. Perhaps I'll be able to reveal the full truth some day, but right now I ask you to display humility and patience. Uh, as a, a chaos cult in my protectorate? Heinrichs, are you laying an accusation against my dynasty? Chaos treads softly, Dahlia von Brunicus. The main danger of secret cults and sects is that they are like seeds. They can remain in the ground for decades, safe from all scrutiny, until an opportunity to sprout, grow, and bear monstrous fruit presents itself. The emergence of a cult on one of the rogue traders' planets does not mean the dynasty head herself is a chaos worshipper. Having said that, it should be noted that Theodora von Valencius was famous for her loose interpretation of the freedoms granted by the warrant. A bloodline can be stained by ancestral transgressions. If it is indeed so, it is in your best interest to do whatever necessary to redeem yourself, and then, perhaps, you will get a chance to salvage your dynasty's reputation. The Lord Inquisitor mentioned that he is willing to show lenience towards my actions that would otherwise be interpreted as radical. That is correct. I should show greater tolerance for the mistakes of a newly appointed rogue trader. To be frank, I am surprised. The Lord Inquisitor is not the type to indulge the weakness of soul and mind, even in someone who only recently accepted the burden of a lofty title. You have spies on the Von Valancius worlds? The person I mentioned is not a spy, but a secretary in the Administratum Department on Dargonus. The planet's governor and Theodora were fully aware of his status. His duty is to fulfill the sacred oath to the Golden Throne, and eliminate threats to the Imperium, which the Cronus Expanse has in abundance. His name is Achilles Scalander. As soon as we contact Argonus, I will introduce you as the new head of the dynasty. I'm sure you will appreciate the presence of such an advisor among your subjects, and I suggest you heed his words at least occasionally. I want to know more about this cult of the Final Dawn. Chaos worshippers. Most often agents of the throne run into lone renegades stirring up the rabble. Insane prophets and hysteric visionaries preaching the end of days. A passing comet, a mutant rebellion, an onslaught of monsters. 
Each time they come up with a new reason why people should prostrate themselves and quiver in fear. Much effort and the blood of those loyal to the Golden Throne was spent before we established the connection between those heretics. However, the cult of the Final Dawn is something greater than a gaggle of misguided seers and fortune tellers. They cleverly spread their agents all over the Cronus Expanse, disseminating heresy among honest people on the Imperial worlds. There is a certain strategy to their actions that changes whenever we get too close. Finally, they have enough military power to have the two ships that we had sent after them later discovered as wreckage. The growing difficulty in making warp jumps is detrimental to us, but is unlikely to inconvenience those who engage in vile sorcery day in, day out. After the events on Rykab Minoris, I suspected the cult might have built its nest inside Winterscale's domain, but the latest reports indicated it is your protectorate that is harboring heretics. Being in your entourage improves my chances of getting closer to their secrets. Alright, well I've already agreed to give you a place. What else is there? The rogue trader should deliver me to the system that contains the industrial world of Kiava Gamma. I will then accompany you to the surface and determine what the cult is planning and how it intends to use the resources that have fallen into their clutches, which may very well include the blessed engines of the Adeptus Mechanicus and even the followers of the Omnissiah themselves. I will be frank. The answer to this question is unlikely to please either of us. The machinations of chaos usually go beyond solely inflicting countless deaths and destruction. Having their plans come to fruition would uh, lead to far more terrible consequences. One of the systems in the Cronus Expanse is already lost. May the Emperor protect us from watching this tragedy play out again. Why did your suspicion fall on Kiava Gamma? Disjointed pieces of data that finally merged into a single picture. Additionally, not long ago a vessel from the world arrived on footfall. The reports from the crew were confused and alarming, making me fear a planet-wide rebellion. We've met a Chaos Space Marine on Rykab Minoris. Do we risk running into his brothers? I have no doubt it will happen sooner or later, Dalia von Bernicus. Chaos Marines siding with the cult is... very, very bad news. Most likely they kept away until recently, pulling their puppet strings from a respectable distance. These traitors seldom show up alone. The best we can count on is having to deal with just a squad of Chaos Space Marines in the Cronus Expanse, and not an entire company. Uh, we'll go for the second one. That is enough discussion about the Arch Enemy Servants. Tell me about the Drakari who stole Rykat's son. Drukari, one of the branches of the Aldari, an ancient and vicious Xenos race. Those creatures are a living terror to ordinary people who fall prey to their raids, for the simple reason that the victims are not killed outright, but instead become their playthings. Just as you and I need air to survive, the Drukari require psychic energy born from torment and pain, which they extract from their captives with uncanny expertise. Their ships, which are difficult to mistake for any other, arrive suddenly and undetected. Their stealth technologies greatly surpass the capabilities of standard Imperium Augur arrays. The objective of their raids is never to capture a world or ship. No, they're only interested in fresh victims. After filling their holes with living captives, they disappear into the webway, a different dimension which conceals their greatest stronghold, Komorag, the dark city of the Drakari from which none can hope to escape. I do not know why the Drakari stole Rykad's son and brought about the fulfillment of the cult's prophecies. Perhaps the Xenos themselves have played into the Archenemy's designs, or perhaps Aurora's divinations, in fact, describe the Drakari's actions. There is only one thing I can say with absolute certainty. There is no alliance between the Cult of the Final Dawn and the Xenos. It is simply impossible. Okay, is there anything else I need to know? Well, let me put it this way. You may think that whatever you want of you may think whatever you want of me, but my goal is not to hinder you. I am here to help you in the fight against foes you may not even be aware of. You have my word that I will provide every assistance in uprooting the heresy that has sprouted in the Von Valancius worlds while their mistress was away, and that I will try to be more patient with the less grievous flaws the bearers of the warrant are sometimes known to have. Thank you for sparing me the time, Lord Captain. Uh, okay, well, we're here. So we have a storage vault here. I'm, I think what I might do is I'm going to pop in all that, the heretical stuff that I've got. Because I don't have a heretical follower yet. And this stuff's all like taking up space in my inventory. That as well. 
this to do that. I don't know why that's on its own, that one. I'll pop it in here, though. Uh... Put that in there. That in. Uh, all right, that'll do for now. What have I got on my personal machine? Oh, right, okay. Supporters of the game. It didn't have an early access or Kickstarter on work, but I'm guessing maybe they bought like the premium early access package or something like that. I only got the basic one, personally. <laughs> So I won't be in there. I'm sure. Okay, uh, that's Heinrichs. So we want to go past Janaris, don't we? We want to go down this way, I think. We'll speak to Jay and Pascal. Uh, let's speak to Jay first. Allow me to thank you JPEG. again for helping me with the cargo, Sherin. I am sure the Ashmags who squirreled away my goods won't give up so easily, and I'll hear more about their scheming yet. Let's strike a deal, Sherin. I will watch your back if you do me a favor and watch mine. <laughs> well, enough jokes. Is there something you wanted? Uh, did you know Theodora? It is difficult not to be aware of the powers that be, especially ones like Lord Captain Theodora. But we never met personally, as the difference between our positions was far too great. Theodora was a mighty ruler, the center of her own universe. And I, a pathetic commoner, was nothing next to her. But you were kind to me, Sherin. And in my eyes, that put you above your esteemed aunt. Or whoever she was to you. Uh, tell me about the dark side of the expanse. The dark side is the real Caronis expanse, if you ask me. But what do you want to know about it, Sherin? What's the Kaspalaka mission? An ancient crime cartel that originated with the first settlers of the Calixis sector. It is run by shadowy clans with robber barons at the helm. Cross their path and you risk making enemies all over the Caronis expanse, or even the entire Imperium. As for the agents, they are just shameless, greedy scum. Every third person on Footfall is a Kaspalakan. But that doesn't mean all that rotten filth is acting together. I've been set up more than once just so some Kasbalikan can get one over on his rivals. And yet, the Kasbalika is generous to its customers. If you can afford it. Anything can be obtained, organized and transported for the right price. The customer is always right. Unless they happen to be a rat. In which case... Huh. Persuasion test succeeded. Scum, rotten filth, rats. It is almost as if Jay's masks briefly slipped and she started using words that have no place in the vocabulary of someone from the upper strata of the Imperium. Uh, are you one of the robber barons? What gave you such an outrageous idea? Was it my immaculate garment? My gorgeous jewelry? Do not worry, Sherin. I will let you know once I become a baroness, should the exalted one will it. Just imagine the strong and fruitful alliance that could be forged between a rogue trader and a mastermind of the Kasbalika. How did you become a Kasbalikan agent? It's not hard to do on footfall. I spent a year working for good old Christo. He was a brave soldier who gave up the ghost in the scuffle with orcs, and then took over his business. Having a good head on your shoulders and keeping the exalted one in your heart helps to establish new contacts quickly. Eventually, I gathered together a group of honest and loyal people. And it only took a few successful contracts for the Kasbalika to take notice. 
I quickly settled on footfall and started dispensing my wisdom to my protégés and subordinates. I lost the taste for getting my hands dirty. Tell me about the coal trade. It really is simple, Sherry. The Kasbalika runs the Imperium's black market, offering special goods to those who can afford their services. Yes, I am talking about Xeno artifacts too. Alien weapons, technology, sometimes even certain kinds of living creatures. Unlike the rogue traders whose sacred warrants make them immune even from the laws of the Exalted One, Kasbalikan agents are used to hiding and covering their tracks. Nobody wants to draw unwanted attention, no matter who might take an interest. Especially now that the Coronis Expanse has a warrior of the Golden Throne as its watchman. Why not? The decision is yours, Sherry. Alright, what, what, what did you want to discuss? Oh, Sherry, I did manage to spark your interest. Allow me to invite you to a more private place. My words are meant for your ears alone. Ah, we're in the middle of space. Where are we? Uh, the flickering light of dozens of candles plays across Jay's face, making her small smile appear even more mysterious. Sherin, the Exalted One himself, brought us together the day you crossed Vladame's threshold. He led us to the cargo and gave his blessing for its return. Do you know what people on my world say when such a thing happens? What's gained is to be shared with your neighbor. She points to the containers in front of her. One contains a polished Aldairi rifle, a rare model, while the other holds an ornate sword. I am sharing what I've gained with you. Please accept these humble gifts in honor of our wildly successful, though suddenly struck, friendship. Uh. Okay, wonderful gift. Accept to afforded gratitude. I knew you would appreciate the Xenos' mastery of their craft. Jay beams at you, a curling lock of black hair around an augmented finger. After a brief, brief pause, she awkwardly continues. So, the matter I wanted to discuss with you is re related to my business. You know that I sell Xeno artifacts to interested Imperial subjects, and Imperial tr trinkets to Xenos. Business is going well, my network runs even without my participation. But when it comes to expansion, well, that is where I hit a wall. Rivals, envious of my success. Jay throws up her hands. Falco, especially. I am certain the theft of the cargo was his doing, but I can never predict what that Ashmag will do next. And while the Imperium's authority may be fragmented in the Expanse, it could crack down on people of my, uh, profession at any moment. Alright, I think I fell out. You wish to use me? Exalted one for offend. Could such a lowly servant of the Emperor use the radiant bearer of the warrant like some kind of tool? The other way around, however. If the rogue trader put in a good word for me with the servants of the Adeptus Administratum, I could become an official trade representative of the Imperium. Just imagine it. A little scrap of paper will offer me and my agents protection against Ashmag schemes, far better than any refactor field. And even the Inquisition will have to think twice before they mess with me, because I'll be a representative of the law in my own right. And the best part of all this is that it will cost you precisely nothing, Shireen. All you have to do is stop by the, the Administratum Palace and obtain a certificate from the Master of Seals. My informants tell me that the palace is located on Dargonus, your capital world. You see how everything has aligned so wonderfully. And of course, I will repay you in kind. How do I benefit from you gaining official status? Besides being in receipt of my eternal gratitude, Serene? Jay playfully raises a brow. Won't it be beneficial to have someone in your retinue with the weight of authority behind them, rather than just another pawn? One slip of paper and I will be able to extend my network to systems far beyond footfall. My agents will be your eyes and ears throughout the expanse. All right, I'll help you. Exalted one, bless you, Serene. I couldn't find a better business partner in all the expanse. Jay ponders for a moment and then graces you with a dazzling smile. Friendship is a gift from the Exalted One and we must cherish it. And you will have no complaints about our friendship, Shireen. I may not be a trade representative of the Imperium just yet, but I can still help you with whatever you need. You must have some faction in mind that you would like to establish relations with. The severe Drusians, the hot-headed pirates of the Kasbalika. 
You merely need to use the right words, like a key for a lock, and people will open their hearts to you, or their wallets. I will arrange everything. You merely have to ask. I think it's the Pirates of the Expanse that we want to get closer with, to get closer to that staff. Oh, nice. She gave us 2,000 uh, faction rep. Not a problem, Shireen. I will have my people put in a good word for you in the right circles. I will humbly wait until you steer your vessel towards Dargonus, the Mercatum Tabula Official. It sounds almost as majestic as the warrant of trade. <laughs> Get our, make our way out here again, then. Well, let's have a look at the two weapons she gave us. So we got this one. Bloodseeker Clave, one-handed melee weapon. I mean, she's the only one who can equip it, but it's pretty strong. Or the two-handed ranged weapon, which also looks really strong. I mean, I think we give we might give both to her, actually. I don't know. That's pretty good. Uh, so if we go to her, yeah, she can equip these. So, ooh, that's good as well, though. But this is better. I think I give her a pistol in that hand as well. Recoil 5. So that's going to be more accurate. And it does more damage. Not quite as much armor pen. But it doesn't do the toxic thing. Ooh. Yeah, I, mean, I think we'll do that. And I think maybe we give her this. It's like a sniper rifle, isn't it? So what does this say? So... It can only perform dead eye shots. They do cost 1 AP. Whenever the wielder scores a crit with a single shot attack, they gain an additional attack this turn. Wow, I mean, maybe she's just become our sniper. Uh, yeah, I mean, that all works for me. Holy crap. Um, just thinking, what was that thing, what was that dead eye shot thing that I had? It's something about a dead eye shot. Was it this? Whenever it hits the dead eye shot, it reduces the enemy's deflection by one and applies an exploit. Oh, it's not actually goggles. Okay. I think we'll do it instead of the pear holster. But who else would use a pistol regularly? She might. She's got an empty slot. Let's do that. Okay. Oh, she could be quite powerful. I mean, does that mean Argenta's not that valuable to us anymore? I don't know. Because she's doing 20 to 25 with her rifle. 18 to 25. I mean, it's still good. It's not not good. Plus, she could be more of a close combat thing with the flamers and such. A sword, though. Okay. <laughs> I think she's going to be a really strong character. I mean, I'm going to have some uh, choices to make, I think, about who we take, and I don't think it's going to be immediately obvious which way we do it. Go talk to Pascal. Beyond the sire knows all, comprehends all. I thought we were going to speak to him. Um, hang on. Uh, take my leave. So, what did it say in the journal about Pascal? Oh, 
Oh, authorize the data bank de decryption. Okay, so, so it is on the bridge. Where do I do it? Uh, personal cogitator. Okay, might be at the front. I don't think it's up there. I'll check down here. it is up here. Uh, so why am I not seeing it? He's standing there. So there's the one in my quarters, but that just... That's just got the names of the supporters. As far as I can tell. Do I go down here? I don't think so. Oh, maybe it's this. Uh, the reflections of the bridge lights are playing on the unlit vid screens of the cogitator. Next to the machine stands a hunched tech priest who bows as you approach, his body nearly folding in half. Lord Captain, the machine spirit of this mechanism slumbers. Should you wish to awaken it, use the key of your blood. That will do it. The servitor's powerful jaws close around your hand with a screeching clack. You feel the cold metal pierce your skin and draw blood. The vid screens in front of you flicker restlessly, filling with numerical combinations. The sacred mechanism is awake and ready to receive your request, Lord Captain. Pascal has informed me that the system has encrypted data stored inside. I wish to know its contents. Without another word, the tech priest turns to the cogitator. He raises his hands and a prayer of binary code pours out of his voice vox device. The servo motors in the bowels of the machine grow louder, its undulating hum responding to his chant. Numerical combinations run down the screens. Uh, I'm not reading all that. <laughs> the machine spirit has discovered numeral critical errors. This data is damaged. The tech priest stops abruptly and the green glow of his visor narrows. Registering an intact segment, the machine spirit has spoken. The worlds of Kiava Gamma and Dargonus can hold certain data repositories. The mechanism is ready to provide the rogue trader with data keys that can unlock said repositories. What data repositories? That remains hidden. The encrypted data bank belonged to the esteemed Theodora von Valencius. She was the only one who could have known about these repositories. Perhaps the former Engine Seer Prime also could have known. Omnisire accept his code. If I were to propose a hypothesis, it would be most prudent of a figure as eminent as a rogue trader to store her classified data in receptacles most secure. How do I accept these? Oh, whoops. What did I say? I need to know more about the caches. Okay. The Omnissiah favours you. The machine spirit is willing to commence the calculation procedure that could restore the lost data. Uh, well, I want to go... I think I'm going to go to Kiava Gamma first, so use that. Uh, the server motors within the cogitator pick up the pace, the heavy thrum growing louder. The machine clicks abrasively for several minutes until eventually a numerical code appears on the screen. The tech priest turns to you. Blessed are the Omnissiah's deeds. The repository on Kuyava Gamma has a security system guarding it. The machine spirit has recovered a code that will allow you to disable the defences. How do I accept these keys? The gracious machine spirit is willing to transfer the data keys to the head of the Von Valencius by means of an elect 
too. A hypodermic tattoo augment. If you're ready to accept the keys, place your hand inside the servitor's mouth. Deep within the servitor's dark gullet, unseen burning hot needles pierce your wrist, but the sharp pain only lasts a moment. The elect two that has been planted inside your wrist should be enough to open the repository doors. Right, what about the cash on Dargonus? The sacred mechanism could not restore this data segment. Have the tech priests of the Adeptus Mechanicus been able to discern how the ship was able to start her warp engine? The engine seer Prime spends hours pursuing the quest for knowledge in hopes of comprehending the nature of said miracle. May the Omnisire's grace guide him on this journey. There is no doubt that it was a miracle sent by the Omnisire as a manifestation of his will, yet the engine seer Prime managed to perceive some logical connection within the streams of data. I am not privy to this connection, but the engine seer Prime will surely share this newly discovered knowledge with you in a detailed report. All right, done. So we've done that now. Um, I think probably the next step is to go to a new place. But I think bearing in mind the time of this video, which I've just checked, uh, we'll leave that for next time. Let's have a quick look at the map, though, and think about where we might go. I don't necessarily want to leave this system just yet because it's not been completely explored. Um, oh. Uh, we got some mobile extractors. Yeah, great. Okay. So we've got the deck. We've foot full where we've been. We've got um, a ship, a dead world, and Altar Templum. Because I want to, I think I want to explore these things before we leave the system. And I might do the ship first, uh, but we'll leave that, as I said, for next time. So I'll just say, uh, if I can get out of here. Uh, let's leave it here. So I'll say thanks very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, if you could hit the thumbs up button, that'd be great. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you think the game's shaping up so far. Anything you're particularly looking forward to coming up or any thoughts on the various builds and characters that we've met so far. Always great to hear your thoughts. And if you're watching this and haven't already subscribed to the channel, it'd be amazing if you could do so. So thanks very much once again, and I'll hope to see you next time for more Rogue Trader. Bye for now.